Hey everyone, so Gatsby 3.0 was just announced at Gatsby Conf 2021. And in this video, I'm gonna show you basically everything you need to know about the new announcement of Gatsby 3.0, what the new features are, what's changing, what's not changing, as well as some of the kind of like overarching product-y feature things that they announced, which I think are really interesting. So if you missed Gatsby Conf 2021, like I did, I actually didn't have time to tune in. I had a bunch of other stuff going on. Uh, luckily they put all of the talks on YouTube, which I'll put a link to in the description below, which you can go and check out. I think again, super interesting. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on there and hopefully we can kind of uh, dive deep into what's going on over at Gatsby here in this video. Okay, so with that, let's jump into it and see what is new in Gatsby 3.0. Okay, so we'll start with the Gatsby Conf keynote, which was presented by Kyle Matthews, the CEO and co-founder of Gatsby. This is kind of an overview talk of everything at the conference, including new product announcements and stuff like that. The first of those was Gatsby hosting. The gist of that being that Gatsby's done a lot of work in the development and preview part of the Gatsby workflow, but they've now partnered with Fastly to allow you to actually deploy your Gatsby applications directly from Gatsby's cloud tooling. They also officially teased Gatsby 3.0, which is the new major version, which of course is what we'll be talking about a lot today. And one of the big overarching things you need to know about Gatsby 3.0 is it's really fast. So there's a lot of published time improvement a lot of the incremental build stuff that they worked on has made a lot of impact. There is also a major update for the WordPress source plugin, which builds on a lot of the WP GraphQL work that Gatsby has invested in, which allows you to use WordPress as a headless CMS for your Gatsby projects. In a similar way, there's another big update for the Shopify source plugin, and e-commerce was a really big highlight of the Gatsby Conf. There's a lot of talks, which I'll link in the description, about how to build with it. We'll also show an example in Gatsby 3.0 of how this makes a big deal. And finally, in the headless CMS world again, there was a major update to the Contentful source plugin, which means faster builds and better integration with some of Contentful's more complex features. Gatsby Image is a really big project that ships with Gatsby 3.0, which we'll cover here a little bit later, that has better lighthouse scores and improved developer experience and uses next generation image formats to make your websites more performant. Next up was a talk from Joel Smith, who is a product manager at Gatsby, talking about Gatsby cloud hosting. So in the past, as I mentioned, Gatsby's done a lot of work in the sort of content and client aspects of Gatsby projects. But now with things like Cloudflare Pages, which I've talked about in this channel, Fastly and AWS, there is edge hosting. So you can deploy things directly on servers around the world for better performance. So the demo spent a lot of time showing how the Gatsby cloud interface works. It includes a lot of the things you would expect, you know, GitHub integrations, deploy previews, and automatic deploys when you push something to GitHub. There's also a new hosting section in the settings and if you go there you can see that there's now the addition of the Gatsby Cloud CDN which is the fastly powered edge hosting that I talked about. There was a quick pricing update to Gatsby Cloud as well. There's no cost for real-time edits anymore, but the biggest thing I think that was announced here was a announcement of Gatsby Functions, which is an express style serverless functions tool built right into Gatsby's local development and cloud hosting platform. So you can sign up for the beta. I'll put a link to that in the description. Okay, so the next up thing was introducing Gatsby 3 from Patrick and Leonard, who were software engineers on Gatsby's open source team. So this is just a quick recap of all the things they talked about. It was kind of a demo and technical talk, but I'll try to highlight as best I can. I'll put a link in the description as well, of course, if you wanna see the full technical demo. So the first thing that was really interesting to see was that there are some really big improvements to the developer server performance. So anytime that you click around on your site and there's any sort of query that needs to happen, it's now loaded on demand. It doesn't generate everything up top, which means that your dev server should be a lot faster. The other really big thing that I was really excited to see is the removal of Gatsby node, which is how we used to construct pages using a uh, API that Gatsby had created. And now instead what we can do is use dynamic routing naming in folders. I'm not sure what the exact technical term for that is, but it's the same sort of format that now Next.js uses. So we can do things, for instance, like say slash products, slash shirt, slash vintage purple tea. And so that can be thought of as kind of like the type of product and then the product name itself. 
In the past, we would do Gatsby node in order to define those pages and those URLs. And now instead what we can do is use this curly brace format, which you can see here is highlighted in the talk. It's just curly brace Shopify product dot product type. And that gets dynamically filled in with all of the product types from your graph QL API. So that's a really cool addition. One really nice quality of life improvement they also showed off in this talk is dev SSR. So a lot of the time, if you're not familiar with Gatsby and you're working with stuff that refers to the DOM, so anything that calls window or window.document, it will work in development, but it will fail during building for production. This is a really, really common thing that people run into. And so now instead of that, Gatsby will actually give you an error saying, hey, you tried to use something uh, like window or document that wasn't able to be rendered by SSR, which is server side rendering and so you'll get this error message you can skip it if you want and continue working but it will let you know that when you try and build this in production it won't be able to build successfully so that's a really nice quality of life improvement there was a lot of improvements to be made as well for build times and incremental builds in particular so you can now see that when you make changes to a specific url or to a specific um, page it will not build the entire site instead it will look for the specific thing that needs to build out and then it will do a build just of that page so it should make things much much faster and generally there was just a lot of focus on better developer experience, faster rebuild times, making pages easier to make, just generally improving the developer experience across the board and making Gatsby a lot more pleasant to work with. So next up was a specific talk on Gatsby plugin image from Lori Barth, who's a software engineer at Gatsby. So Gatsby image is a new set of tools that allows you to use images more performantly in your projects. So in this demo that she gave us, she imported the static image component and then showed all the different things you can do with it. So you can provide it with an image, of course. You get things like source set and image formats. So you can use things like AVIF or you know fallbacks like JPEG. You also get really cool additional props like placeholders, which are different ways of how to render the image while it's loading, and then background colors for some sort of default background color while the image is loading. There's a lot of different stuff here that you can customize. I'll put a link in the description to all of the different props you can pass in here, but I'm really impressed with it, and it looks like it's gonna be a really great addition to working with images in Gatsby. One thing that Lori didn't mention that I saw on Twitter actually a little bit after GatsbyConf wrapped up is that there's a new Egghead course from her about how to use Gatsby um, updated for Gatsby 3.0, including Gatsby image. If you're an Egghead member, it seems like pretty much a no-brainer to go check out this course and see what's new in Gatsby. And if you aren't a member, I'll put a link in the description where you can sign up. You can also take my Cloudflare Workers serverless course while you're on there as well. So overall, my impression of Gatsby 3.0 and Gatsby Conf generally is that it seemed to be a pretty big success for the Gatsby team. It's a super competitive space right now with things like Next and other tools uh, really making a go at Gatsby, which was kind of the default Jamstack tool for a long period of time. Um, so I'm going to check out the Egghead course. I'm going to take a look at some of the new stuff in Gatsby plugin image and check out what it means for building e-commerce and headless CMS based tools. I think overall, though, it was a really interesting and really cool presentation of everything the team has been up to. Okay, so that is basically everything that happened to Gatsby Comp 2021, including all of the new stuff in Gatsby 3.0. If you found this video interesting, you should subscribe and turn on notifications. I do weekly videos on web development, things like Jamstack and serverless, stuff that is super relevant to Gatsby Comp. And so if you find that stuff interesting, you'll probably like the other videos on this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.